in the British Museum looking at a very large ivory panel. Usually ivories are very small. This is huge, and apparently it's actually one half of a diptych. Now, what's interesting is even though it's in the British Museum, it actually comes originally from Constantinople. So this is a Byzantine object. It looks like the other half of the diptych would have been on the left side. The angel who's in this ivory, and let me just say this ivory is probably about what, 18 inches? Yeah, I would say so. Probably by about five and a half or right. six. The other panel would have been on the left, and the archangel who we see seems to be looking in the direction of what would have been the other figure in the other panel. And you can further tell that the panel would have been on the left because you can actually see three holes that would have been functioning as part of the hinge. Right, and a diptych, of course, means two a panels. work of art made out of two panels as opposed to a triptych, which is three panels. We can assume that there would have been another saint on the other side, another angel, perhaps. Another um, angel, yeah. or perhaps the angel giving this orb to a, a king or an emperor. So we see Greek text up at the top, and below that we see this incredibly ornate arch with a cross above that, and the cross is surmounting an orb. There seems to be a, almost a kind of sunburst behind it. Very decorative, beautiful carving of a kind of ribbon or banner just below the wreath. And then some broad open areas. Under some dentals, these are just architectural elements. We see Corinthian pilasters framing the figure. It actually reminded me of an apse in a church with an archway behind and those columns and maybe perhaps a kind of recessed space. Even though this is carved, it's such a shallow relief carving, it's so flat, you do get a sense of real architectural space there. And then the figure himself is so interesting because it's, it's so classicizing in some ways. This is, though, very much a Byzantine rendering. Look at the size of the archangel in relationship, for instance, to the staircase. He's very large. Is that yeah. what you mean? Yes, he, he very much takes up that whole space as a kind of hierarchy of scale so that his size matches his divine nature. So this is interesting because this is very classicizing. Look at the drapery. Yeah, uh, it's very classical. That he wears. Even up against the wings of, you know, he's an angel, he's an archangel. And but he has this classical the, toga on. Yes, it, mm -hmm. and, it's, yeah. and it's actually getting fairly late to see that kind of synthesis, right? Even his hair, the curls in his hair look like a Roman sculpture, Roman it, portrait bust. It's true. If you stripped away the wings, if you stripped away the cross and the orb, you could be looking at a kind of Roman and portrait. The detail here in the carving is remarkable. The lines that make up each of the feathers in the angel's wings or the little circular swirling decorations in his cuff. So the delicacy of his hand as he holds the staff, the other hand holding the orb with a cross on it, that symbol of power. But we know that we are not in the classical world anymore. And the way that I know that is by not only his size in relationship to the architecture, but when I look down at his feet, Ah, oh, how so? You know, he doesn't really stand on the ground. His feet sort of flatten out and hang over those stairs. He doesn't really make contact with the ground in a meaningful way. And that suggests to me a kind of weightlessness, a kind of spirituality that reminds me of Byzantine and medieval art. The handling of the body, which, by the way, really is transparent behind the cloth. You know, the body really does swell that cloth. It's not that later medieval rejection of the body below, but no. this is still coming out of the classical. Look at his toes. They're great toes. Aren't they? They are great. I mean, this is such a strange combination of the spiritual and the human it that is. is a very funny moment in, in early Christian and Byzantine art. There is a kind of awkwardness with this synthesis. It hasn't been worked out yet. Right. It really is a clash it's of traditions. Of pagan and Christian. Absolutely.